While there has been controversy around Tessa Blanchard when it comes to in-ring wrestling, she is one of the best. Making even more headlines in 2019 when she defeated Sammy Callahan, my mortal enemy, for the Impact World title, that reign ended with a whimper after an apparent falling out between her and Impact Wrestling. During this time, there was also allegations of bullying and racism, which is never what you want, but it was still quite the statement all around. Not sure any other promotion would have done this, and there's a reason Impact did. They thought Tessa was that good. The two have now parted ways as we wait to see what's next for her, and this most people know. The following, you may not. I'm Simon from What Culture. Hit that subscribe button. This is 10 Things You Didn't Know About Tessa Blanchard. Number 10, Shakespeare Before Suplexes. Given that Tessa is a Blanchard, she has deep roots in the wrestling industry. It's not that shocking she eventually found her way into the business, but this was not her first stop in her journey. Before she was punching people in the face, Tessa was drawn to music and story and therefore was very keen on performing on Broadway. Talking about this during an interview with the San Antonio Daily Express, she had excelled at this during school and even entered the world of Shakespeare and tried her hand at a little bit of amateur productions. Surely as the wrestling business evolved, Tessa looked over to what was happening and realized she could continue the family legacy and get her dramatic fix. And that's kind of what happened. Can't say it wasn't a good choice. She's found a lot of success. Number 9. Her wrestling roots run deep It's pretty obvious there's a relationship between Tessa and Tully. I mean, they share the same name. This isn't a coincidence. Even if you did miss it, every promotion under the sun will shout that they are father and daughter, and some go an extra step and tell you she's also third generation given her granddad Joe was a wrestler. And yet this goes on as her stepfather is Magnum TA, one of the true what-if stories when you look through the history of the squared circle. A two-time NWA US champion, he was all set to be the next breakout star before a horrific car crash basically ended his career before it even began. As you've likely worked out, Magnum also married Tully's ex-wife, which saw Tessa move in with TA when she was but four years old. It would be a while until she decided to become a grappler, but that's not a bad learning tree to have now, is it? Number 8. The Other Issues With Her Family With all that said, this knowledge wasn't available to Tessa because there was a time when she cut all ties off with her family. Finding it too hard due to years of substance abuse and neglect, Blanche had set off on her own as soon as she was legally allowed to do so. Could not have been easy. She would go on to work in bars and clubs to make ends meet, and at this stage, I would guess the thought of being a wrestler was the last thing on her mind. This went on for a year until 2012, when it was announced Tully would be going into the WWE Hall of Fame and then it all changed. Number 7. That Hall of Fame Headline by Edge The other main talking point from this show was that the original version of the Four Horsemen were going to be inducted. It meant Ric Flair got in for a second time and allowed Tully Blanchard to take his rightful place among the elite. If you don't know, just go and watch nearly anything this group did. It is pretty good. Tessa was in attendance for this after mending some fences and has said it was this moment that made her realize she wanted to give wrestling a go. She started to look for schools even without mentioning it to her dad, you would imagine because she wanted to make it on her own. And doesn't that just go to show the decision to support her father during what must have been a tough period changed Tessa's life forever? What a funny old ride it is. Number 6. Training with Cedric Alexander Tessa would then find a school 20 minutes from her house. Handy. The High Spots Wrestling Academy was run by George South, a journeyman wrestler who likely had more success as a trainer than he did as an actual worker. His resume in that sense was pretty damn good too. The amount of wrestlers that went through there and are now smashing it is pretty darn high. Prior of this was someone who was training alongside Blanchard, who has now made it all the way to the top, and his name is Cedric Alexander. Tessa Tessa has said he went out of his way to help her, including staying after training to have matches against one another to try and improve. They took different paths when all was said and done, but let's face it, as I say these words, Tessa isn't signed by anyone, and there's plenty of rumors she could be WWE bound. Alexander is currently a member of the Hurt Business. They could use a female member. You could tap into this real life relationship. Doesn't sound like the worst idea to me. Number five, career changing advice from Carlito. After a few months of training, Tessa decided to tell her family, which even from a mental point of view would have been a huge step forward, and by all intents and purposes was a natural in the ring. Where she was struggling was connecting with a crowd, and of all the people it was Carlito who was on hand to help out. Tessa's big issue was she felt like she was being judged because of her last name. As such, crowds would turn a blind eye assuming this was nepotism, and we're not allowed to do that. It's as if it was just somebody taking advantage, even though the irony was blind. Blanchard wasn't, 
year tried to make it on her own merit. So what did Carlito say to her to quell such fears? Well, and I quote, he said, Tessa, you don't need to apologize for who your dad is. You don't need to apologize for what family you're in. You were born that way, but you do need to work hard and you do need to back it up. Pretty good advice all around, to be honest. Thanks, Carlito. Please don't spit an apple into my eye. Number four, dating the king. I don't really know why we're all so excited when wrestlers start dating. They live such unique lives, it makes sense to find love with somebody else who gets it. I suppose it's no different to the wider world going nuts when people like Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt get together. Just something to react to. Today, Tessa is married to Daiga, who is also a wrestler. But what the internet really enjoyed a few years ago was when it came to light that she was dating the one and only Ricochet. The two even released a t-shirt crowning themselves as the king and queen. And if you followed them on Instagram back in the day, you would have seen some lovely pictures of them as a couple. The pair broke up in 2018 among some rumors that they'd had a confrontation at the WWE Performance Center. Don't know how true that is, but they both seem very happy now. It's all that matters. Number three, her NXT run. There was a time where part of NXT's remit seemed to be to get in a well-known indie star, give them a few matches, and then send them on their merry way. In 2016, it was Tessa Blanchard's turn. Appearing three times from April to June, she had losing efforts against Nia Jax, Carmella, and Alexa Bliss. The commentators made sure to let you know about her family tree, but really these were nothing to write home about, just a series of matches that happened. Tessa had a much bigger role when she competed in the first ever Mae Young Classic in 2017, where she lost against the eventual winner Kari Sane. The two also had a top-tier scrap, so if you're going to watch one of these, put your eyeballs on this one or eyeball if you're Rey Mysterio. Number two, drinking with the bar. In 2016, WWE took the feud between Sheamus and Cesaro and very surprisingly turned them into a damn good tag team. Whether it was due to the fact they both needed something or that they had good chemistry with one another, the bar was born and had a pretty good tag run for WWE standards. I mean, they were together for ages. It all started to click that November when Sheamus was drinking in the pub and before long, him and the Swiss Superman had got into a bar fight and helped each other out. Maybe in that moment they realized they had something. Before all of this though, there was another woman drinking next to Seamus, and you guessed it, it was Tessa Blanchard. She didn't do much other than order some wine and smile in the Irish man's general direction, but if you recognized her, this did seem very weird. Number one, fighting with Paige's family. Despite only being in her mid-twenties, Tessa has quite the CV. She's wrestled as far as Japan, winning titles all over the place, and has also had a role in a Hollywood movie. When The Rock decided he wanted to make a film about Paige Paige's family, he knew that actress Florence Pugh would need a stand-in when it came to grappling in the ring. And who did he turn to? That's right, once again, is Tessa Blanchard. It did mean that she got to wrestle in front of a sold-out WWE crowd as producers reenacted the moment where Paige won her first ever women's title against AJ Lee after an episode of Raw. And this means the big question is, will she ever get this chance again? As ever, only time will tell. Know of anything else that nobody knows about Tessa Blanchard? Make sure you let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com and read yourself some articles like this. Follow What Culture on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE and watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll talk to you again soon.